Hello there. Uh, we've got a new one in the house today, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4. Before we get into this video, I do want to let you know that this is going to be a review about the fitness and running capabilities of this watch and less of all the other stuff but I will cover everything, just some things a little bit briefer than others. This one is really gonna be for the runners out there, the fitness enthusiasts, those kinds of people. The Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 is the first Wear OS device to get Wear OS 3, which is an all new operating system for Google. And this one's interesting because the hardware and the guts are made by Samsung, but the operating system is primarily Google and it's an interesting collaboration. But the real question is, does it stack up in terms of fitness tracking and using it as a GPS running watch for syncing with Strava and getting the kudos and all those things? That's what we're gonna find out in this video today. I've been waving this box around but I've actually been wearing the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 for about a week now and I think I've got a pretty good understanding what this watch excels at and what its shortcomings are. And on that note if you enjoy this video or you find it helpful I would really appreciate a thumbs up and possibly hitting the subscribe button down below that really helps out the channel. Also check out the links in the description as those do help support the channel but they cost nothing extra to you. Okay let's move on. The Galaxy Watch 4 comes in two major flavors. I've got the Galaxy Watch 4 that's the end of the name and then there's the galaxy watch 4 classic which actually has a mechanical bezel around the perimeter that you can actually spin to navigate through the menus on the galaxy watch 4 it's a little bit cheaper but it also doesn't have that bezel however they do try to simulate that with the software and I'll show you that in a little bit. And on top of those two different flavors, there's actually four different sizes ranging from 40 millimeters all the way up to 46 millimeters. And the only difference between the different sizes is going to be the battery capacity and the size of the display. Other than that, they are identical. Pricing starts at around $249 and goes up to around $429. The one I have here was the cheapest GPS version available. I believe this one came in at $249. Are you super confused yet? There's a lot of SKUs with this watch. So to find out the best pricing available, check out the links in the description down below. They might help you out. Okay, so in this video, I want to focus on the hardware of this actual watch. So this is the Galaxy Watch 4 44 millimeter version. And so when I go through the weights and sizes and stuff, just keep that in mind. Looking at the hardware, even though Samsung advertises that this watch is 44 millimeters in diameter, it actually came out to be 44.6 millimeters on my digital vernier calipers. So this isn't a super small watch, but it is really comfortable thanks to its thin size. It's really thin in the profile. In terms of weight, we're looking at 46 grams on the Galaxy Watch 4. And for a quick size comparison with some other comparable devices, uh, all the way on the right here, we've got the Galaxy Watch 4. Next to that, we've got the Tick Watch E3, which we'll talk about again later on in this video. This is also a Wear OS device. Then we've got the Apple Watch Series 6, so that's a direct competitor to the Galaxy Watch 4. Next to that, we've got the Suunto 7, another Wear OS device. And then we've got the huge, chunky uh, Casio G-Shock GSW H1000. This is actually a Google Wear OS device, believe it or not. And yeah, this thing is massive in comparison to the Galaxy Watch 4. And here's what the Galaxy Watch 4 looks like on my men's 165 millimeter circumference wrist. You can see that it fits my wrist pretty well. Uh, it doesn't stick off too much. It's a very thin device. Like I said, there is an aluminum bezel and on the right hand side, we do have two buttons, the top being a dedicated button to go back to the watch face whenever you're deep diving the menu. And then at the bottom here, you've got a back button. Flipping the watch over, we've got a bunch of sensors on the back. Uh, in the middle, we've got the optical heart rate sensor and SpO2 sensor. So that'll pick up your pulse and your blood oxygen saturation level. Around the perimeter of that, we do have a bio impedance sensor and that works in conjunction with the buttons to turn into an ECG sensor. The included band with the Galaxy Watch 4 is a pretty straightforward nylon band and it's the type of band that you clasp uh, with a standard kind of clasp and then stick the remaining piece of the slack part of the band through the band itself so that's what keeps it from flapping around I do like this design but I do have one major issue with this band and it's that I actually ran out of adjustment points I'm actually on the last hole available for how tight the band can be so I could have used a few more holes I think so because I don't have enough holes on this band to get it super tight I actually swapped this band out with another band I have from a polar watch in order to do my heart rate testing so I knew I'd be getting accurate results and I am happy to report this is an industry standard quick release band. And as you can see here, here's the other band I was using. 
I can pop this off with my fingernail, put a new band on, and I've got plenty of adjustment. And these are widely available on Amazon or eBay or whatever. Inside the box, you also do get a little hockey puck style magnetic wireless charger. They say wireless, but I don't think it's Qi wireless enabled. And this just snaps onto the back of the watch. You plug the other end into a USB wall wart and you're good to go. The Galaxy Watch 4 is also five atmospheres waterproof. So going swimming with this is fine. Just no deep water diving. The Galaxy Watch 4 also does have a built-in microphone and speaker. And these are used for things like taking phone calls, uh, talking to Google Assistant, things like that. And you actually can record yourself into the watch if you want to. And this is what it sounds like. In terms of build quality, the Galaxy Watch 4 does feel pretty solidly built. It's got a little bit of heft to it. Like I said, 46 grams. It's got an aluminum bezel around the perimeter. The back is plastic, but it does feel pretty robust. In the glass, I don't know what it is. It's probably something like Gorilla Glass. Um, it hasn't scratched yet and I've been wearing it for a little bit. So, so far so good. Back to the front of the watch. Obviously Samsung watches have beautiful di displays and this is no exception. This is a Samsung 1.36 inch display. It is OLED, it is 340 by 340 resolution, and it is bright and vibrant and beautiful and just what you'd expect from a Samsung device. I'd say it's on par with something like the Apple Watch, which I have around here somewhere. You can see here, even compared to the Apple Watch Series 6 that I have on the right side of the screen, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 has a beautiful display. It might be even a little bit nicer than the Apple Watch Series 6, but in my opinion, they're both really good and I have no issues looking at these even in direct sunlight. Now that we talked a little bit about the hardware, I wanna talk about one glaring issue I had with the Galaxy Watch 4, and that is compatibility. On previous Wear OS devices like this TicWatch E3, all I had to do to get this watch to work with my iPhone is download the Google Watch app on my iPhone. It wasn't a big deal actually worked pretty well. The Galaxy Watch 4, however, does not work with iPhones at all. You heard me, if you own an iPhone, don't buy a Galaxy Watch 4. You can't pair this device to an iPhone at all. And even with Android devices like this Motorola Moto G Play, I think it's called, I had to download a whole bunch of apps to get it to work with the Galaxy Watch 4. And unfortunately, there's actually a couple of other features about the Galaxy Watch 4 that simply just don't work unless you have a Samsung Galaxy phone. But if you got a Motorola or anything else, uh, you won't get full feature support on the Galaxy Watch 4, which is kind of a bummer. Like I said before, if you've got an Android phone that is not a Samsung Galaxy phone, you're going to need to install a couple of apps. At a bare minimum, you need two apps. So the first one is the Galaxy Wearable app. This just allows you to pair the watch with your phone. So you absolutely need this app in order to use it with an Android phone. The other app that you're going to want to download is Samsung Health. Samsung Health just tracks all of your wellness data and your exercises and can sync them over to Strava. So you're definitely gonna wanna install this app. This shows your steps up at the top there. Then you get your daily activity, exercises, food intake. If you decide to put that in, I don't do that. Uh, you got your sleep tracking here, body composition, heart rate data, stress tracking, water intake, and blood oxygen levels throughout the day. And there's also a social platform built in, which I have been using, but allows you to challenge your friends and family to step competitions and things like that. Okay, battery life. Uh, Samsung claims up to 40 hours of use with the Galaxy Watch 4. I did not get that. For me, I'm somebody who runs basically every day. So I'm using the GPS in the watch pretty much daily. I had to charge the watch every single day, even on days where I didn't run, it was a struggle to get through a full day of use. It's definitely a little bit better than the Apple Watch, which struggles to get through 24 hours, like on the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4. I could charge it in the morning, use it all day, sleep with the watch and get to close to lunchtime before I had to charge it again. But on some days, if I went for a really long run, that would drain the battery a little bit quicker and then I'd have to charge it before I went to bed. Now you might be asking, what kind of battery life can you expect in GPS mode? And that's really hard to answer because they don't advertise that and it was hard to measure because it seemed like on every run I would get different results. I saw anything from about 8% per hour up to about 12% per hour. And that's really gonna depend what app you're using to record your run, if you're using Strava, the built-in app, any of those, and how often that OLED display is gonna be turning on. By default, the Galaxy Watch 4 does have a gesture-based display, so you have to raise your wrist in order for it to turn on so you can see what's going on on the screen. But 
product. There is a setting in the menu that allows you to turn it on always on display, so it just stays on all the time. However, that setting will cripple your battery life. So yeah, if you're an ultra marathon runner or something like that, I'm not sure I would rely on the battery uh, to get you through a full race if you're going for like an eight to 10 hour time in your ultra marathon. Enough blabbing about the specs, let's take a look at the user interface. Like I said, this is mainly a touch-based device, so the buttons really only bring you back to the home screen. Everything else is done through swiping across the screen. You can see I've got a watch face here that displays a whole bunch of data. I've got my battery life, my step count, uh, the weather for the day, I've even got my air quality, I think that is, and my heart rate data on the left there. And within the Samsung wearables uh, app on your phone, there's actually a whole bunch of other watch faces you can choose from. Let's do a quick run through of the new user interface. You can see here my watch face we just talked about. If I swipe left, we'll go into our phone's notifications. If I swipe up from the bottom of the screen, it drops into the app draw and this is newly redesigned. I really like how this is. Uh, you can see here I've got a whole bunch of apps already installed and we'll talk about some of the apps in more detail later on in this video. If we swipe down from the top of the screen, it just brings you into your settings and your quick settings. And then swiping right goes through the tiles of the watch. And this is similar to the older Google Wear OS, but there are some unique tiles on the Galaxy Watch 4. Okay, let's talk about wellness tracking on the Galaxy Watch 4. Uh, it does a lot. So you've got your basics like your step count and your active time and your active calories. It'll also show your graph of your active time throughout the day, how many calories you burn throughout the day, and then your goals throughout the week. And here we've got the body composition app and this is really unique. Basically, you just put the watch on your wrist and then you go ahead and click measure. Then it actually asks for your weight, I'll continue. And then you actually just touch the two buttons here and those act as the second point of contact for body composition. You can see there it's going up to 100% and then it will give me my results. Okay, there's my results. You can see it's giving me a skeletal muscle mass of 68.2 pounds, fat mass of 33 pounds, and then a body fat percentage of 21.2. Here's the problem with this uh, system that they're using. It's wildly inconsistent. So over the past five days or so, I've done a reading every single day and every single reading was wildly different. I did mine in the morning, basically before I took a shower every day. And for whatever reason, it would say anything from 12% body fat up to 22% body fat. And that sort of swing shouldn't happen within a 24 hour span. So for me, the technology of the body composition and the bio impedance sensor is really cool and it's really exciting to see things evolve a little bit further. However, that tech is just not working for me. I don't know if other people are having better results. For me though, not very good. The Galaxy Watch 4 will also track your sleep. You can see here last night, I got seven hours and 56 minutes, and this actually lined up pretty well with some of my other test devices. So when it comes to sleep tracking, I don't know which one's more accurate because I don't have really a scientific way of measuring, seem to do their jobs fairly well. One interesting feature that the Galaxy Watch 4 has when it comes to sleep tracking is that it will actually use your phone's microphone to pick up snoring while you're sleeping. The idea being that you have your phone on your nightstand, you're sleeping next to your phone, and then the watch is communicating with your heart rate and your SpO2 levels, uh, and then it can hear you snoring. It can use all that data come up to come up with a better picture of how your overall sleep was. For me, it didn't really change things much, whether or not I had my phone next to me or not, uh, but it is an interesting feature. And finally, there are two more features of the Galaxy Watch 4 when it comes to wellness data that we can't use because we don't have a Galaxy phone. First off is the ECG app. You can see here, follow the instructions on the Samsung Health Monitor app on your phone. I can't do that because you can't actually install the Health Monitor app on a Motorola Android phone. What's interesting is I actually managed to get the Health Monitor app installed by kind of hacking it onto the phone. But when I click on it, it won't actually do anything. It just kind of makes a wide screen and then it drops and goes away. So. Kind of a bummer. And you can't use another feature, which is blood pressure. The Galaxy Watch 4 claims to be able to pick up blood pressure right from your wrist, which would actually be pretty cool. Unfortunately, I can't test it out because again, I don't have a Samsung phone. And again, it's only compatible with Galaxy phones. So 
there's that. Let's talk about activity tracking with the Galaxy Watch 4. After all, that's probably why you're watching this video. The built-in app for activity tracking is actually pretty good. You can see here, there's actually 95 different activities to choose from. And if there isn't something, you can go ahead and click add. And then there's a few additional ones here you can choose from. Unfortunately, this built-in activity or workout app does not have any form of triathlon or multi-sport mode. So you can't do any swim, bike, run type activity and have the transitions in there. These are just for basic activity. So you can see if I click on running, it counts down from three and it automatically starts your activity. And then on the screen here, you can see that there is up to six data fields and these are fully customizable. You can click on them and change what data is displayed. What's cool is if you swipe right, you can actually go into the music player and be able to control your music right from within the activity app. And the built-in activity tracking app is actually compatible with Strava. All you have to do is set it up in the Samsung Health app and it'll sync your runs over to Strava. And speaking of Strava, you can download that from the Google store and have it as a native app right on the Galaxy Watch 4 to sync instantly up to Strava right after you're done with a run, which is really nice. Let's talk about third-party accessories for a second. When you're recording your activity, you might wanna wear a chest-based heart rate sensor or an armband or something like that. Unfortunately, that is not supported by the built-in Samsung Activity recording app, but you can download third-party apps. And one of my favorites is called Sporty Go. Terrible name, but a pretty good app. And within the Sporty Go app, you can see on the right here, there's a little Bluetooth icon. And if I click on that, it'll bring up any Bluetooth chest-based heart rate sensors I have laying around or even armband, anything like that. Even power sensors are supported on the Sporty Go app. So that's something to keep in mind. If you need external sensor support, you can get it from third-party app, but not with the built-in application. Let's talk about the actual user experience using the Galaxy Watch 4 as a running watch. What it's like to go for a long run with the Galaxy Watch 4. Generally, it's pretty good. The display on the Galaxy Watch 4 is plenty bright to see even in super bright sunlight, so I haven't had an issue with that. I do like to set it to always on mode so I can see it all the time. Like I said, that does drain the battery a lot quicker, so just keep that in mind. The only issue I have with the Galaxy Watch 4 in the actual experience of running with it is going to be this touch screen. If this screen gets wet at all, it just becomes unusable. Like, it doesn't register any sort of touch. Uh, touches can swipe left instead of swiping down. It just becomes really bad. It's it's just not very good when it becomes wet at all. And without being able to use the screen, if it gets a little bit sweaty or wet, it's a little bit tough to navigate around and stop your activity or whatever. So yeah, that's my only complaint using this when I'm out on a long run. Something else to note is that there's no form of built-in, uh, you know, course navigation on this watch. It's not a dedicated sports running watch like a Garmin or a Coros or a Polar or Suunto or anything like that. However, the Galaxy Watch 4 does actually have uh, Google Maps on board and it works really well. Also, if you're using Google Maps while you're out on a run, you do have to switch between the apps. So you have to go back to the watch face, swipe down, dive back into your Strava app to start your activity, then go back out and swipe down and go back into your Google Maps activity to be able to see where you're going. It's just not a very seamless experience. But thanks to the Google Play Store, you can download third-party applications like All Trails, or uh, Gaia GPS, and it is compatible with a lot of music apps. For instance, here, I do have Spotify. And the nice thing about Spotify on the Galaxy Watch 4 is it does allow you to download your songs or podcasts right onto the watch so you don't need your phone on you in order to go on a run and listen to music. And you can even listen to the Chase the Summit podcast that's available on Spotify quick plug. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room and that's going to be GPS and heart rate accuracy. To put the Galaxy Watch 4 to the test, I took it out on several runs in different environments under heavy tree cover with cloudy days, sunny days on the roads, on the trails, a whole bunch of different situations to get a well-rounded opinion about the accuracy. I also paired it up against my Garmin Foreigner 945 LTE and a couple of other sensors. Let's talk about GPS accuracy first. Um, not very good. <laughs> So I found that the GPS track on the Galaxy Watch 4 was really jittery. Uh, it wasn't really consistent with my other test devices. And when I say jittery, I just mean that there were a lot of data points that weren't going in a straight line, even though I was running in a straight line. Generally speaking, the GPS accuracy of the Galaxy Watch 4 hasn't been awesome in my experience so far. It's not terrible. Like if you bought the Galaxy Watch 4 and you weren't comparing it to other devices, you probably wouldn't notice this. And if you're someone who just casually uploads to Strava, it's probably not a big deal to you, but for me, 
it's uh, below average in terms of GPS accuracy. Okay, let's talk about heart rate accuracy coming out of the optical heart rate sensor on the back of the watch. Uh, again, very, very disappointing in this one. I don't know what's going on here because in some situations it's in line with my other test devices, but then for whatever reason, it just falls off a cliff and I've tried everything. I tried different bands. I tried wearing it super tight. I wear, tried wearing it higher up on my arm. Uh, I just can't get good heart rate data out of the Galaxy Watch 4 and that's really disappointing. Okay. Hey, we're winding down to the end of this video. Now it's time for final thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 from a runner's fitness oriented perspective. Uh, generally, it's a really cool watch. Like day to day life, it's great to read text messages on and make phone calls on and get your calendar notifications and all that stuff is just really great on the Galaxy Watch 4. And I do like to see the innovation with that body composition feature where you can get your body fat percentage and your skeletal mass and all that. That's really cool stuff, but I do wish it was a little bit more accurate and consistent because it was kind of all over the place. And in terms of accuracy with GPS and heart rate performance, for me, it just wasn't there. I was having really bad luck with the heart rate performance coming out of the Galaxy Watch 4. So I guess that begs the question, who is this watch for? This one in particular costs $279, and at that price point, there is a ton of competition. For instance, this is the TicWatch E3, which I reviewed a few weeks ago on my channel, and this watch comes in at just $199. And guess what? It's compatible with iPhones, it actually got pretty good GPS and heart rate performance, and it's way cheaper than the Galaxy Watch 4. And from what I've heard so far in the rumor mill, the TicWatch E3 is actually supposed to get updated to the new Google Wear OS 3, which would be great, but I do wonder if it will still be compatible with iPhones. It would have to be, right? And on the same note, the Apple Watch Series 6 here is a direct competitor to the Galaxy Watch 4, but they're for different markets because like I said, the Apple Watch only works with Apple phones and the Galaxy Watch 4 really only works best with a Galaxy phone. So at the end of the day, who's the Galaxy Watch 4 for? That was a weird sentence. I think if you're casually into tracking your wellness and your fitness and you don't scrutinize the data coming out of your Strava account, uh, you're not looking at your GPS performance and your heart rate data that much. And on top of that, you also own a Samsung Galaxy phone and you value all of the ECG data and body composition, all that stuff, while also having a really nice smartwatch that's great for day-to-day -day use. That's where the Galaxy Watch 4 might fit in. But in my opinion, if you're looking for a dedicated running watch or a real fitness watch, I would save a little bit of money and look at something like the Coros Pace 2 or the TicWatch E3, which is just, both of those are $199. And of course, if you own an iPhone and you're looking at the Galaxy Watch 4 or you want something like it, the really only thing you're gonna wanna get is gonna be an Apple Watch because really these are very similar. However, the Apple Watch Series 6 has way better GPS performance and actually a really good heart rate sensor. But for me, if I had 275 to 300 bucks burning a hole in my pocket and I was mainly a runner, I'm not sure if the Galaxy Watch 4 would be the first thing I'd be looking at. But I wanna hear from you. Are you interested in the Galaxy Watch 4 as a fitness device, as a running watch? Let me know in the comments down below. I would really like to hear your opinion on this. If you made it this far into the video, you probably liked it. So I'd really appreciate it if you went down and hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel down below. And if you're interested in picking up the Galaxy Watch 4 or any of the watches I showed off in this video, I'll have links down below in the description that do help support my channel, but cost nothing extra to you. And while you're down there, check out the Patreon page for behind the scenes stuff of what I'm doing around here. Okay. I think that just about does it. I always forget things in this and then I watch it and then I realize it happens every time. I hope I didn't forget anything. If I did, let me know down below. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. Bye.